Today, an FDA approval and melanoma, abstracts released for the upcoming ASH meeting, and early data in ovarian cancer. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA approved the combination of vemurafenib and cobimetinib as a treatment for BRAF positive, metastatic, or unresectable melanoma. The decision was based on the Phase three COBRIM trial, which compared the MEK inhibitor cobimetinib plus the BRAF inhibitor vemurafenib to single-agent vemurafenib in 495 previously untreated patients with BRAF B600 EK mutation positive, unresectable, locally advanced, or metastatic melanoma. The median progression-free survival with the combination was 12.3 versus 7.2 months for vemurafenib alone. The objective response rate with the combination was 69.6% compared with 50% for vemurafenib alone. In a biomarker analysis from the study, 11% of patients in the COBRIM study were found to have a coexisting baseline mutation in RAS, RAF, RTK. However, these alterations were not found to impact progression-free survival or objective response rate in patients who received the combination. The American Society of Hematology released the abstracts for its upcoming annual meeting and exposition. One of the news items generated from the abstract release involves an 11-month-old with CD19 positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia who was given an experimental therapy after progression following bone marrow transplant and blinatumumab. After receiving a single dose of chimeric antigen receptor 19 T-cell therapy called UCART-19, she showed signs of count recovery and the bone marrow was in cytogenetic and molecular remission. Also released were findings from the Termalin MM1 multiple myeloma trial. In the study, the addition of exazomib to lenalidomide and dexamethasone showed a median progression-free survival of 20.6 months compared with 14.7 months without exazomib for patients with myeloma. Also, Genentech announced that the FDA accepted the supplemental BLA for abinutuzumab in follicular lymphoma for priority review. The company said data from the Gadolin trial in non-Hodgkin lymphoma are to be presented at this year's ASH meeting. The American Association for Cancer Research, together with the National Cancer Institute and the European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer, hosted the International Conference on Molecular Targets and Cancer Therapeutics. The conference featured a collection of early phase and preclinical research. In an analysis of 17 patients with heavily pretreated platinum resistant ovarian cancer, the folate receptor alpha targeting antibody drug conjugate mervituximab surravtanzine demonstrated promising preliminary clinical activity. In the full study cohort, the response rate was 53%. In an FR alpha high group, there was an objective response rate of 80%. Also at the meeting, the selective EGFR inhibitor, AZD9291, showed promise in patients with leptomeningeal disease, a rare complication of non-small cell lung cancer affecting the brain and spinal cord. Overall, the treatment led to improvements in symptoms and 72% of patients were showing signs of a response on scans. Enclave was at the recent Chemotherapy Foundation Symposium, where a number of sessions focused on the latest news from across a broad array of cancer types. One of the presentations focused on the high level of efficacy seen with BRAF MEK combinations in melanoma. In this next clip, Dr. Jeffrey Weber of the Laura and Isaac Perlmutter Cancer Center discusses the significance of the FDA approval of the combination of dibrafenib and trametinib. Well, there are many positive impacts of the approval of dibrafenib and trametinib combination therapy in the melanoma field. I think patients are living a lot longer. Uh, they are feeling better. They're going back to work. They have an improved performance status. There's clear benefit for the patients. Interestingly enough, it leads to complications for the physician. Uh, five years ago, we had a certain number of patients per physician with in, the, in our melanoma group. Um, we anticipated needing a certain number of docs. The patients are living longer, doing better, doing well, and many of these patients stay on treatment for years. So from the physician work assignment perspective, you have to think differently. You need more physicians to take care of melanoma patients, but they're staying alive longer, which is great. And then there's the cost to society. Um, it costs $150,000 to $200,000 a year to keep somebody, that's the wholesale cost, to keep somebody on BRAF MEC. If you're going to stay on the drug for five years, that's a lot of money. And while the people who stay on for a long time are clearly deriving benefit, 
uh, at what cost, number one. Number two, do they really need to stay on forever? I have had patients who've gone on to have near CRs or CRs on BRAF mech and gone off usually for toxicity, and actually they've stayed in remission. So the question is, can you discontinue BRAF mech inhibition and still benefit patients? We don't know the answer to that question. Um, if the answer is yes, uh, it's pretty obvious every insurance company will allow you to go with the combination for a certain amount of time and then you'll have to stop. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.